Welcome back to Skippers. Today I have five must-add players for your fantasy baseball teams in week three. This video is sponsored by So Rare MLB. Please subscribe, join the Discord, let's get into the players. First must-add player is Jared Kelnick of the Mariners. He has 49% roster, 351 average, three home runs, five runs batted into stolen bases, and an 1100 OPS. Are things finally starting to click for him? Kelnick has a home run in three straight games, and one of those was a 482-foot moon ball, which is the furthest home run hit at Wrigley Field in the StatCast era. Jared Kelly never had a problem with hitting the ball hard, and he has done that at an incredible level to start this season, but there hasn't been any consistency to it throughout his career. It has been the swing and miss at the big league level that has done him in. Last year, Kelly had a pretty horrible zone contact percentage of 75.3%, compared to this year where his zone contact percentage is sitting at 85%. This year, his average exit velocity is 94.4 miles an hour, compared to last year where his exit velocity was at 86 miles an hour. So far, he has a way to runs created a plus of 212 and his two stolen bases are a nice touch for fantasy managers. Again, it's early, but Kelnick ranks in the 90th percentile or above in each of the following categories. Max exit velocity, average exit velocity, hard hit percentage, expected weighted on base average, expected batting average, expected slug, and barrel percentage. Kelnick is smoking fastballs. In 2022, he hit 190 against fastballs, and this season he is hitting 429. There's a reason that Kelnick was a top prospect, and that was because of the big time hit tool. Over the past years, he seemed to fit in that mold of the 4A quality player. Too good for the minors, but struggled to figure it out at the big league level. Should he be able to continue with these contact skills paired with the big time power and able to barrel baseballs at this rate, the Mariners are finally going to see some of that return that made them part ways with Edwin Diaz. The second must-add player is Mitch Keller of the Pirates. He is 23% rostered. So far this season, he is 1-0, 357 ERA. He has 22 strikeouts, a 136 whip, and only 17 and two-thirds innings pitched. The king of the off-season hype video is starting to put things together on the actual mound. His most recent solid outing came against the Houston Astros, which I thought was a good litmus test to see if his success from the Red Sox start was going to continue. In his two starts in April, Keller is 1-0 with a 208 ERA has only given up three earned runs with 14 strikeouts in 13 innings. I was reading a Scott White write-up and said what was making him so successful recently is obviously giving up a lot softer contact, and the way he was doing it by was by keeping hitters guessing with a new six-pitch arsenal. He's tightened up the usage of all of his pitches with a cutter, four-seam sinker, sweeper, curveball, and changeup. Keller didn't throw his cutter at all last season and has brought it back as his most used pitch, which is always interesting. If he gets better at keeping the ball in the yard, he'll be a nice addition for the rest of the season. Here we are. We are in the so rare game lobby. I'm going to show you guys how to get ready for a tournament. Setting my lineup for game week five. That's going to run from April 14th to the 16th. It starts in three days, obviously. So I'm going to go into the minors. I got to I got to try and win one here. I've been struggling with my team. Um, I'm going to register my team here. Complete your team. Register team. I'm going to have all my players that I've picked. Rowanzi, Eduardo Rodriguez, and Jeffrey Springs. I mean, I've got to put Jeffrey Springs in here at some point. Um, but I'm going to go with Rowanzi. He's a probable pitcher in this. The relief pitcher, Devin Williams again. I have no problem with that. Jake Berger, Derek Hall. Got to go with Jake Berger at this point. Uh, we have Seager, Lars Diaz, Gabriel Moreno. I'm going to go with Corey Seager. I think he's one of the best players I have. Again, Corbin Carroll, just absolute must play in this format as well. And then we got to go find some Couple couple gems here, so I'll go yesterday Ruiz and then Gabriel uh, Moreno as my final guy. So look like these other guys aren't going to get starts at all. So there it is. I am all set up. My team has been registered for the Miners Tournament of Game Week Five. Do not forget to sign up for So Rare MLB. That link will be in the description. The third player is going to be Garrett Cooper of the Marlins. He is 19% rostered so far this season. Sitting 333, three bombs, eight runs batted in, and a 997 OPS. As the third season of doing the Skipper Show. I'm pretty positive this is going to be the third straight year that I tell you that Garrett Cooper is a player to add. For the past two years, it has been the same sentiment with him. When he's healthy, he is a solid fantasy option. So far this season, the now 32-year-old has a way to runs created plus of 163 and an isolated slug of 286. Cooper has always been a high average, high batting average on balls and play guy for his whole major league career and never really translated into a lot of home runs, thanks in part to an average launch angle around seven and a half degrees. Cooper isn't going to have a super high ceiling for you. For me, the reason I want to tell you to do this is there's a good chance that your fantasy team is already pretty injured 
and you need some stability and a little bit of time of need and maybe some help in the RBI and average department, I think Garrett Cooper can be that guy for your teams. Cooper's going to strike out once every four at-bats, but having him hit in the two or three hole when he plays for the Marlins is going to make him a solid asset, and you might as well pick him up if you need help. The fourth player this week is going to be Dre Jameson of the Diamondbacks. He's 30% rostered so far this season. He is 2-0. He has a 146 ERA, 12 strikeouts, a 105 whip, and 12 and a third innings pitch. Jameson found his way into the D-backs rotation thanks to a Zach Davies injury, and he tossed four shutout innings against the Milwaukee Brewers, who were top five in weighted runs created plus against righties coming into that game. Jameson obviously started the season in the bullpen where they used him over multiple innings in various different spots that led to two wins in a save and over eight and a third against the Dodgers and Padres. Now, Dre Jameson enters the rotation again, and he is set up for a matchup with the Cardinals next, which obviously isn't a super favorable matchup and won't make him a must-start guy in his next one, but there are much worse pitchers to roster at this point. Jameson has been hit decently hard in his outings, but has luckily avoided disaster. He's once again pitching much better than his expected stats and is getting big-time whiffs on his slider. If you're already depleted at the starting pitching position, I think Dre Jameson is going to be a solid pickup. And finally, a fresh call-up, Edward Julian of the Twins. He is 8% roster in the minors last season. Sorry, not last season, this season, hitting 292 home runs, four runs batted in, a 421 OBP, and a weighted runs created plus of 145. Julian gets the call up to the big leagues after a great 2022 season in double A, where he hit 17 home runs, stole 19 bases, and most impressively got on base at a 441 clip. He followed that up with an impressive spring and world baseball classic, where he had five home runs and hit for a 317 average. Julian's gonna be able to get on base wherever he goes with his good plate discipline and a career career minor league walk rate around 20%. The only thing that's going to worry me is that the Twins may not keep him up for too long. He doesn't really have a position, and with some of the hurt guys coming back into the fold at second base for the Twins soon, this might just be a short-time move. But if he ends up staying in the long term, this could be a big-time add in your OBP leagues for someone who isn't highly rostered at all, maybe even not even talked about by some of your teammates. Those are the must-ads for Week 3 in Fantasy Baseball. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Thank you to So Rare for sponsoring the video. Do not forget to subscribe, join the Discord, and I'll see you guys next week.